awesome. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Got CT Fletcher here. Um, very excited about that. And, um, you know, first time I saw CT, I was uh, 14 years old. And, or excuse me, 15 years old. It was a Moreno Valley AAU bench press competition. Martin Drake was hosting. Richard Schoenberger was there. And CT was walking around yelling, man, monster, no drugs, no shirt, 600 pounds <laughs> raw. I didn't even know what raw meant. Yeah. So this big old dude, do 6'11", looked like it was 135. And I guess he got, must have got so hyped up or something when he went to 6'17". He didn't get it. I thought he could have done 700 because that's 6'11". Probably to this day, maybe the fastest or one of the fastest certainly I've ever seen. It, it was crazy. So um, that and then I remember um, telling my guy who was coaching me in power up at the time, he didn't come to the meet, was named Steve Hall, about how big CT's arms were. And that kind of as a kid, I thought like arm training was kind of for weenies. I started powerlifting, not bodybuilding. And I remember <laughs> thinking, man, he, he must be able to stabilize that weight with those huge old arms and someone I've looked up to ever since. So Welcome aboard, CD. I really appreciate you doing this interview with me. You know what, uh, Josh? I really appreciate you having me, man. Uh, that's a very fond memory for me. I'm glad that you brought up Richard Schoenberger because uh, a lot of people, you know, don't know who he is. Yeah. And he's uh, underrated, but you got to witness his power in person. And I can't say enough uh good about him you know that that's my training partner he changed everything when when we started training together that changed everything for me because before him you know I was a big fish in a little pond and I really didn't have any challengers at the gym that I trained in but when Rich came along man we did battle every Monday night and uh he pushed me to a, the next level and that's that's how I got to be C.T. Fletcher, really, with his help. Okay, and was that the American Eagle Gym or somewhere in Norwalk, you right? Absolutely. American Eagle Gym is where I met Rich at. First time I met him uh, was in a competition. And it was a Night of the Living Dead, if I think. And they had a bench competition there. And uh, uh, I seen this guy, you know, uh, getting dressed in the back, well, getting ready in the back. And my training partner was a guy named uh, Fred Sanchez at the time. Okay. And uh, Fred kept telling me, he, he said, uh, he kept whispering to me, CT, do you see the size of that son of a bitch over there? Yeah. And I was going, hey, man, uh, whose side are you on, man? Yeah. He, he, was, yeah, he was so amazed as how big Big Daddy was because Rich's chest was just, you know, it was, uh, he couldn't do floor presses. His chest was so big. Yeah. And I'm like, man, he, look at his calves. You know, and I had tiny fucking calves. <laughs> he was talking about how big. I said, his calves ain't been pressing, man. Let's go. So we started out, you know, as adversaries. And then we became, uh, after that day, uh, we both, I think we both missed uh, 575 that night. And uh, it, we, we went on, you know, went at it. Was, was American? Day. See, I never went to American Eagle Gym. Was heard about it? Is it was it kind of like your gym, a more hardcore gym, or what? It was a hundred percent hardcore. Okay. No frills, you know, no no frills whatsoever. I think they had one treadmill, but uh, everything else was, you know, iron. Had two hundred pound dumbbells. You know, it was it was nothing but iron, man. Just the way I like me. That's I came from uh, a guy named Fred. Uh, Hamilton, I believe his last name was Hamilton, but it was he was Fred Donaldson. That was his last name. Fred Donaldson, his garage. Uh, okay. So I came out of a garage and went to American Eagle. But I, I came out of a garage in Compton. Then I went, I was moving upscale to go to an actual actual gym. And, and that was American Eagle. It was just like the garage, only it had yeah. a name outside. <laughs> and that's where you because you talked before about is it Compton where you're kind of you were looking up to um, Craig Munson? Absolutely, man. I mean, that was uh, uh, seeing him just uh, put a whole new perspective on what huge was. You know, yeah. I thought I thought out because in that garage, we had some monsters, man. We had some pro bodybuilders that came yeah. out of that garage. And I thought, you know, you know, nobody was bigger than these guys because also in my neighborhood, Tookie, of the Crip Gangs, yeah. 
uh, was in my neighborhood. He lived in the neighborhood. And I used to see him quite regularly. And I thought, you know, nobody was bigger than Tookie. That was that was it, you know, just mm-hmm. at the top of the food chain. Until strong strolling along the beach one day at Venice Beach, I seen some giant motherfucker throwing up a double <laughs> bicep. And I yeah. go, who the hell is this guy? And get closer and closer. The closer I got, the bigger this something, because he was big from a mile away. You know, the closer I got, yeah. the bigger he got. And I could I just it just blew, you know, people told me before I seen him. You remind me of a little Craig Munson. Yeah. And I, I was offended by that, Josh. I'm like, a little? Wait a minute, man. I'm 250 pounds. I ain't yeah. little. You know, I got 21 inch arms. I weigh 250. I'm not, I'm not, I don't know who this guy is, but I yeah. ain't little. And then when I seen him, I said, oh, shit, that was a compliment. <laughs> okay, thanks, man. Yeah. I pre- I'll take it now. Okay. And so you're a little bit your background. So you you won like didn't Enzer host like a strongest bench in America? And you did it raw and won it when everybody else was wearing shirts. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I did not win it. I, I did right. not win. He had it was my favorite contest, by the way. But he had, uh, I mean, all Anthony Clark was there. He had the top bench pressers in the world uh, were all gathered in one spot in Texas there. And um, I did not win. What happened is I went out on my uh, opening lift. I, people, everybody, was, I only wore a, a shirt in competition because everybody else had a shirt on. So yeah, I sure. never, never trained with one. Big Daddy never, of course, he, he never wore them in training or in competition. But I put one on for the contest. So this is the greatest bench press in America. I want to, I put, they fucking exposed me in one of those shirts and I thought I was going to, pass out putting the damn thing on yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah you know because you're holding your head hands over your head for so long and i'm like oh i was getting lightheaded but i got the sound bitch on went out there first attempt and ripped right down the middle man just busted off <laughs> so uh from then i went raw for the rest of me i just put my tank top on went out there put 705 on the bar and gave that sound bitch all i had was and that over the house or out where he's at Longview? Longview, Longview, okay. yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Well, and that was so uh, man. That was that was my favorite contest because uh, uh, Josh, the day before, uh, the contest was that Saturday. Next right. Friday, I had a doctor's visit, and I told my doctor that I was uh, going to the contest. And he said, oh, I knew this was before my first open heart surgery. The doctor said, oh, Miss, your aortic valve is just, you know, hanging on by a thread, man. If this thing tears or bursts out there on that stage from the strain of all that weight, uh, you could die right there on stage. <laughs> and uh, uh, he was looking at me uh, to see my reaction. And I looked at, I was smiling and shit. This shit was, and he's like, I don't think you understood what I said, Mr. Fred, you could actually die. And I'm, I looked at him and I said, well, hey, what a fucking way to go. What a way to go, Doc. What a fucking way to go. On stage in the biggest bench press contest of my life and, and with my peers all around me, magazines and shit coverage, and this motherfucker died in, uh, in this setting, what, I mean, I couldn't ask for a better way to die. I'm like, this is this is the uh, you know storybook shit right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you think I'm gonna pass this up? He looking at me <laughs> like I'm a fucking idiot. I'm looking at him like he's a fucking idiot. <laughs> that was that was my favorite kind. I did get it. It's my favorite contest though, because uh, you know I went out there and, and laid it all on the line. So to me, that was the most important thing. What about the strict? I don't know as much about the strict curling. What well, because you were a world record holder champion in that, right? Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> I'm glad you gave me the opportunity to tell a little backstory on that. Yeah. Because um uh the day that I did the uh, 225, the 225 strict curl, yep. it lasted, you know, for 20 some years uh before Cyplink called uh Dennis mm-hmm. Cyplink, I believe that's his name. Um uh, um broke it the russian guy broke it and um and on the day that i did it you know it was one of my first dates with my wife 
you know, the, the, yeah. with one of the first dates I took you to was a street girl contest to watch me, you know, uh, I wanted to show off a little bit in front of my wife to watch sure. me watch me win this world title real quick, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so I go out there and uh, I open with uh, 210. And I tell him to put 225 on there. And um, the 225 went easy. And there's no no recording of it nowhere, man. Yeah. The, uh, I, I, they have the 215, I think, or 210 or something. On record, but they did not have the 225. I can't find that anywhere. 225 went easy, and I didn't want to press my luck in front of my girlfriend and miss the lift. I didn't want to miss no lifts. So uh, I did that easy one the time. Nobody was close to me that day. So I said, I'm just going to stop right here. And, and But if I had I known, you know, all these years or so many years later, somebody else would you know, uh, be it would be historical or something like that. I never yeah. expected 225 to last, you know, a month. So for the 20 well, years was explain just... Explain it to people what it is. A lot of people okay. don't know what, what uh, it is. Strict curling, uh, and now this is how how we did it. Mm -hmm. uh, strict curling um, is an event, and when they say strict, what you have to do is keep your butt, your back, and your head up against the wall uh, when curling the weight. If either one of those three, your butt, your back, or your head comes off the wall, then the lift is no good. Right. And now they a lot of organizations have modified the rules so that you can take your head off the wall, you know, and that's bullshit. That yeah. is not it's strict curling. Lift. That is not strict curling. So uh, I have an organization called ISCA, International Strict Curl Association, and we keep the same old school rules that I had, uh, you know, 30 years ago. So do you have, yeah. do you run any contests with it? Oh yes, we definitely have. We have the nationals and the worlds every year at the gym. It was it Phoenix cool. Beach and then we switched, uh, switched it back to Iron Addicts gym. What about the other thing you're doing that street physique or whatever? What was it? Is that kind of like street bodybuilding or something? Um, street physique was another, another gentleman, uh, did that? That was his idea. Okay. Uh, uh, you know what? I don't think it was a bad idea. Had uh, guys off. The, that, that was something that Craig Munson would have killed in. <laughs> and what was the criteria to win? Uh, the criteria was uh, very um, speculative. It was subject to the judge's opinion, and you know it wasn't a uh, definition. I mean, you could compete with a tank top on. It's mm -hmm. just how. How you how imposing you look walking down the street? It was a side, yeah, sidewalk cracking contest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you look like a big monster walking down the street with a tank top on, then you could possibly win. I did had you, a. Did you train your neck? Because you had a big neck, like huge, right? So that was like perfect for street physique. Uh, yeah. Was that <laughs> natural, or did you train it a lot? You no, know, I at, at back then, yeah. I, I did a lot of wrestling wrestling bridges yeah okay. that was that was how i, I trained my neck was is the, the way wrestlers did it okay what was your training split back then when you're at your your strongest three days a week um was the initial initial and then when i started getting uh you know uh legs um back in legs and shoulders uh back and buys uh chest and tries it was a uh, basic, 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 basic. And then when I started being a, a serious competitive bench presser, mm -hmm. I, uh, had, I, I had one day of Louis Simmons and one day of uh, programming. So I did my Louis Simmons high rep stuff on one day. And uh, the next day was just programming a regular normal, you know, percentage program for powerlifting. So were you going more like in the beginning was it more of like, um, did you start off more in bodybuilding or do you always go, did you start off in strength? Absolutely tried to be Mr. America in the beginning. Okay. Yep. Wanted to be How Mr. America. Oh, man. Uh, I got out of the Army at uh, 21, so I was probably 22, 23 years old. Oh, so you didn't do in high What was your athletic background in, like in high school and stuff? I ran track. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I was a track runner in high school. I didn't start, uh, well, you know, I started lifting weights 
at a very early age and then, uh, you know, slacked off or during my, during when I was in the service, all I wanted to do was fight. So mm-hmm. I, I backed off weights, concentrated on fighting. And when I got back out, I went back to weights. Okay. And what was your, so what do you think, like, um, what was your arm work like? Because I think that's like what people don't understand is when I first saw you and I was like, I, I remember telling the guy at work, I worked with uh, this older guy. He's like, I says, oh, we showed me a picture of Ronnie Coleman. I'm like, his arms were bigger. It looked like to me. And I thought I was just a kid, but I saw a picture from that meet. And what I remember is pretty accurate. So you, what was like, I mean, your arms size wise were up against anybody ever. So what was your secret? Uh, there, you know, Josh, there, there's no secret. I think that um, it's a it's a matter of discipline. Yep. Uh, and you know, discipline over everything really oh, definitely kicks the shit out of motivation. Right. Because discipline makes you, you know, you go. It doesn't matter how you feel that day or what's going on uh, in the world that day, if you're disciplined, you're gonna go do the shit. Whether you're hurting, I, I, if, if, if something's aching or pain, you don't give a fuck. It's just, it's, it, it just, when you're disciplined, it has to be done. There's no two ways about it. this shit has to be done. And that's how I felt about arm training. But I, I'm gonna do this shit, you know, I, I envision Mm-hmm. my biceps and I, I think that's just that's the difference right there we're all doing curls we're all doing triceps uh but obsessive compulsive with the shit and i think it's a, it's an absolute necessity to be the best or be the uh to get the goal that you're after is to be obsessed and i was fucking obsessed i think i did the same thing that everybody else did i was just fucking obsessed with it man Okay. Now that makes sense. Was there any specific movements you thought really like helped you more than um, you know, you, you know uh, like I said, uh, preacher curls were a um, a big staple of mine. I really I want to call them, you know Scott curls after Larry Scott, but uh, he was an early arm influence on me. Larry Scott was right, and that I uh, really you know fell in love with preacher curl and people see you know they see uh the uh 215 or 220 on on the preacher curl but i was 50 some years old when they seen that they should have seen me when i was young i was really you know but nobody had a nobody was standing pulling out a fucking phone and, <laughs> and tape and shit that we didn't even have a fucking cell phone back then <laughs> but nobody was you know but I, all my best lips were never recorded this is stuff the stuff they see on the internet you know, uh, like that, that meet you're talking about. I think we had a, they had a VCRs and shit back then. They did. They have, <laughs> uh, my parents at their house somewhere still have that meet on there. It was like a freaking guy in Leanne Adams or something was the people that recorded it. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, oh. they, they had stuff back then, but, but in the gym when you're training, yeah. nobody whooped out a fucking cell phone. The, 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 you, Richard Schoenberg had done some stuff. Uh, that was jaw dropping stuff in the gym. Uh, that you know, we never even thought about. Well, cool. let's see, I'd love to hear about both of you guys' gym feats. Oh man, uh, I, still to this day, I think the most impressive thing I've seen, uh, is Richard doing a military press. And when I say military, I don't mean it was no jerk whatsoever. No, only thing moved was his fucking arms and shoulders. And he stood flat-footed, military press, 525 pounds. Oh, Jesus. Hey, I ain't seen nobody do it yet, man. And that just stood flat-footed, right off the racks, 525 pounds. And and just just having a little fun. Just having a little fun. So, and we would uh, do, like, they don't, you don't see people doing these too much anymore. Uh, every once in a while, you see somebody, but we used to do uh, behind the neck uh, presses, seated behind the neck presses with 405. And I don't wow. see too many people do uh, do that, but that was, you know, that tremendously helped, I believe, helped our, our bench press, yep. being able to press that pressing power. 
What about some other guys like tricep stuff, dips, anything like that? Oh man, um, <laughs> yeah, we would do uh, root well routinely uh, two and a quarter with triceps extensions. That was you know a normal tricep workout, and anything anything Rich did, uh, you know, I had to do. And right. anything I did, of course, he had to do. So we were constantly <laughs> trying to do something that the other one couldn't do. <laughs> so, what, was, so what do you think's changed the most in the sport since you, you've been around since, you know, a long yeah, time? Since, uh, since Moses parted the Red Sea. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, <clears throat> I've been to, uh, I think the meets that, um, I've seen recently, or the most recent ones that I've seen, when I, I mean, the guys back then, uh, Josh, if you had went to uh, the greatest bench press in America or seen that contest, we had some fucking animals, dude. Yeah. I mean, it was some fucking animals. And they had, the guy in front of you would be so, this, when I went to the greatest bench press, the guy who went before me, I can't remember his name. But this guy grabbed a fucking steel chair, banged himself over the head until fucking blood was squirting out his forehead. And then he was ready to bench press. I think that if we had uh, cats like that and the cameras rolling, that powerlifting would be a hit show. I believe people would be in it. It was some fucking wild entertainers they was the psych up the yeah. psych up if people could see you know uh a top top level guys get psyched up like they used to back in the day i think powerlifting would be a household uh sport like the fucking nfl man it was it was crazy it was crazy and when when, when i seen that guy squirting blood out of his fucking forehead you know i was chomping at the bit i yeah. couldn't fucking wait for my turn to go. When I seen that shit, that just psyched me up, man. That, I said, oh, you think that was fucking crazy? Wait till I go out there. Yeah. yeah. It, was just, it was just a fucking, uh, it, it, it was a, it was just a different level of, you know, and I, I don't see, I don't see that level of um, psych. It's, and you know, look, look at Kazma, Bill Kazma. Yeah, yeah. That, oh, it, it's that type of psych up uh, Bill was one of the fucking, his psych up was second to none. That dude would look fucking crazy, man, and he's ready to walk through walls. I, I just don't quite see that. I may, I, you know, I may be missing it, but I just don't quite see that these days. I wonder who that was before you at that bench contest. Man, I don't, I'd have to look at the tape again. I haven't seen that tape in years, but that fucking guy banged himself over the head, fucking blood pouring out, and then he was ready to fucking bench press. And oh man, I felt like a wild animal when when I when I seen that shit. I felt like a fucking wild animal. I couldn't wait for them to open the cage door so I could tear this fucking stage down. Man. I'm like, oh my god, yeah. this is so, wonderful. When did you do your first meet? Uh, my first meet was uh, in Inglewood, California. It was a little uh, meet they had. It was a powerlifting and bodybuilding show. They had the powerlifting show in the daytime. And that uh, bodybuilding show at night was called uh, Mr. Inglewood, uh, Darby Park. I'll never forget that. And it's Iron Man had something similar. And mm -hmm. I think somebody should bring this type of contest back because you you it's you had to be strong and look pretty good, you know, because you, you you do your power lift in the daytime, you come back at night, put your little poles yeah. and trunks on and 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 compete. And I was uh, a point that show hooked me. Because I always, I always, you know, if you're strong, Josh, you know you're strong when you're a kid. Yeah. You're stronger than the other little boys in your class. You know, you it's it's no, if you're naturally strong or born strong, you're going to know it at a very early age. I knew it in elementary school that I was stronger than the rest of the kids. Was, every time at recess, we'd go out there and wrestle in the sand pit, and I'd be slinging them left and right, man. So... I say, hey, you know what? I'm stronger than these cats are, and I, and I, and I knew it. And so strength was just uh, a natural thing. And I, so we went to powerlifting contest. That was wonderful. I think I, that was the first time I benched uh, 
540 pounds. And I, oh man, that, that won the contest. And I was like, woo, woo, this is, I'm big, I'm a big deal. Then I went back that night, put my little posing trunks on it, and won the bodybuilding portion of it. So, oh uh, what man. Year was it, like, approximately what year was that? Uh, 81. I, I, did, I did. I won uh, 81, 82, and 83, I believe. I won three years in a row. Mr. Inglewood, cool. man. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's cool. So um, what about, so you had, um, I, was, I was listening to some stuff on you in the, the near-death experience. You don't mind me asking about that. So what happened nope. with that? You said you, you said you're positive. I mean, I know we're totally changing subjects here, but you're saying what happened there? You said you like went to this peaceful place and all that. <clears throat> yeah. Um, <clears throat> it was, you know, um, I talk to people uh, all the time or, or counsel people about, um, cause you know, they ask me a lot about it, uh, who have recently lost someone or, you know, they, you know, they, they're all torn up naturally. Yeah. Mother or father or something. I said, it's, it's gonna hurt. It's definitely gonna hurt. There's nothing you can do about that. You love that person. They're not physically here anymore. So it's just, it's gonna hurt. It's no way to avoid the hurt, but I can tell them with a surety, with a certainty, no doubt, no, you know, because I've been there that, you don't need to worry about them. They're okay. They're, they're, this is a peace like no other, there's no comparison on mm -hmm. earth to this peace. I mean, I was only gone for a very short time, but the peacefulness is inconceivable. There's nothing that compares to the peace of death. Peace that is it's it's uh, I mean, a, a good rest, a, the best sleep you ever had, best summer is does not compare at all to the peace of death. Yeah, it's crazy. Your dad used to be a preacher or something, right? You're saying? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Dad, if you, are you still religious at all? Or uh, no, I am not religious, but uh, I definitely believe in God, and I, I consider myself a man of faith. You know, religion is made up. I don't care what religion it is, it's made up by some man. Some man started that religion. Whatever religion it is, some man started it. But faith is not, you know, man-made. Faith is, you know, uh, uh, the, the evidence of things not seen, you know. Faith is what I, I, I strongly believe in God, strongly believe in life after death. Uh, so, yeah, I'm a stream man of faith, but not of religion. And your, how's your health now? Pretty good again? Yeah, I think my health is pretty good. Oh. You know, I ain't going to be uh, running no marathons or anything like that. But they check, the, check my heart out regularly. And uh, they say, so far, so good. Everything's firing on all cylinders. I'm still That's here. Fantastic. I'm blessed. Yeah. Are you going to compete anymore? Hell no. <laughs> that, that's a, I could answer that in two seconds flat, man, but. But you know, I got a son that's coming along strong. Yeah, and <clears throat> he's gonna, you know, carry on for me. So I'll is also he, have some grandsons. Yeah, benching, I remember when he's benching like two twenty five. Yeah, yeah, two absolutely. Yeah, I have, wasn't that long ago, and you know, uh, he has a pretty rough uh, way to go because a lot of people uh, have great expectations, or they want him to be me. Uh, and he's he's Samson, you know, he's not me, he's he's Samson, and they don't understand they're comparing him to me at my best, and he's just getting started. You know, I was in, in my 30s, uh, when I was really at my strongest, 34, 35 years old, when I was, you know, at my strongest, and he's uh 27, so he's got a little, got a few. I, I guarantee by the time he's the same age as me, because his progress, he's further along than I was at his age. So uh, he's going to, I guarantee you, he's going to uh, do, uh, outdo everything I ever did. Was was his background boxing or something before that, if I recall? No, he 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 loves, uh, you know, he loves to train. He trains, uh, he's got a coach and, you know, just like me, <clears throat> when I was young, and that's, you know, I, I thought that 
I want to be a fighter. And it was, you know, like, uh, you know, but that I discovered once going into, and back then it was tournaments. I once get into tournaments, now I didn't want to be no fighter. Not no full-time fighter, man. I, it's fun when I want to do it, but uh, as a, a everyday thing, now getting punched in the face every fucking day is not my idea of enjoyment. But right. yeah, occasionally, just to get out there and get the adrenaline rush of the crowd, there's nothing really, nothing like fighting to uh, face another dude who's trying to knock your head off. There's really nothing to compare to that. But it's not something I want to do every fucking day. <laughs> what so what was your, one of the last questions i have is what was your um couple more questions your nutrition like when you and guys were at your biggest you and richard oh man uh we ate everything that was nailed down it, it's and you know and, and i felt uh josh i felt like that is what we had to do <clears throat> in order to maintain the size you know the sidewalk cracking size i want to be uh ginormous there ain't no such word as ginormous. And I didn't want to be a such word to be able to describe how fucking big I was. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to be, you know, uh, co cartoonish, comic bookies. I had uh, 24 and a quarter inch arms and I wanted 25s. So, <laughs> you know. What were you weighing your biggest? My biggest 325. What about Richard? And Richard was, I believe he told me 365. He was always uh, heavier than me. And uh, I mostly competed, though, in competition. I had one contest where I, uh, I, I did compete at 325. Mm. Uh, but most of the time, I, I competed around 298. And uh, so Rich would be in the weight class over mine. Uh, I think it went, uh, they had something past 300. Really? Yeah, yeah, 308. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so so he would be in the over 308 guys. And I went to, you know, up to the, I kept competing in 308 class. So Is he still lifting now, Richard? Yes. Richard still trains. And, man, you know, we're still the best brothers. Uh, yeah. And it's so, it's so funny. You know, I laugh <laughs> because we come, we come so far, Josh, so far. Uh, you know, back in the day, when we first started, it was uh, not manly uh, to tell another dude that you love him. He just, you know, oh, no, 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 no fucking, you know, unless it was your son or somebody, you know. Yeah. And now, you know, I, I tell him I love him all the time. And when I see him, you know, we walking around uh, slow motion. You know, <laughs> and it's, it's funny, man, because we've been, you know, a couple of the strongest dudes around and now you know with a couple of old men sharing war stories and it's you know it's like the best it is people ask me uh do i regret not being what i used to be do i you know you know, do i feel sad now i'm having the best time of my fucking life right now it is it is wonderful to be able to grow old but it's it's horrible to grow old and look back over your life and don't see shit now, if you can look back on your life and seeing accomplishments and milestones and footprints and things that you made yeah. that are ir you know irreplaceable, then when you get to be an old man and can't do shit like me, then you, you'll have fond memories and you'll feel good about yourself. So I why remember I, judging the contest when I was out there. A yeah, couple of years ago. He was officiating the contest here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, no. Uh, Big Daddy is my head judge. He's yeah. my head judge for everything. And when we go to, you know, conventions or fit cons or whatever, Big Daddy's right there with me, and as he should be, because if it wasn't for him, it, it wouldn't be a CT flex for me. And, and, and I, wanted to, go ahead. I wanted to, before I get up, I wanted to thank you uh, personally. Uh, you came to Iron Wars and and uh, you, 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 it's because of you that the regular strength and, and TD uh, are there. I know that. And I, uh, I really, I really want to thank you for that. I appreciate the hell out of that. And you yourself have made a hell of a name. Jail House Strong is a hell of a name. And uh, you accomplished that. And I wanted to congratulate you. On I really that. appreciate that. 
The other one, the funny one is too, I didn't know if you, I, I also helped get Craig out there too. I called him up when I was at the airport and I'm like, come on, dude, I'm here. You got to come out. No shit. Yeah. Whoa. Thank you, man. I appreciate the hell out of that too. I, that's my big brother. I talked to him quite a bit too. He's a real good yeah, he's dude. Solid. Yeah. Real good. Real good dude. Yeah, he's a, uh, he's, he's uh talked about his training. He's pretty smart with it. He's pretty detailed and everything he's, he does. Yeah, yeah. Um, his training, um, old school week to you know, <clears throat> to come from uh, uh, looking looking up to the dude and respecting him so much to have him come to the gym and sit down and we talk like we talk like old friends. He calls me up on the phone. Hey, yeah. CT, I just want to see how you doing, man. You know, yeah. it's it's a, a hell of a full circle. Last question would be. Um... About, I'd like to hear a little bit about you psyching up. Like, what do you kind of think about and stuff and train? Like, to keep yourself one disciplined because, like you said, it disciplines more than motivation. So, who can walk that straight line and not veer off it? But two, certain times you need that motivation to get that extra umph at a contest. So, I'd love to hear about your approach to psyching up. <clears throat> well, uh, the the thoughts that, you know, go through my head uh, when I'm psyching up is like, I don't care uh, at a contest. It's like, right. I say it out loud, which one of you motherfuckers is coming in second? And I say that <clears throat> because I don't feel <clears throat> that it's anybody there who can match the preparation or my intensity. Uh, you know, I don't feel there's anyone there who's willing to go as fucking far as I'm willing to go. <laughs> if motherfuckers say they're willing to go to the end of the earth, I will, I'm going what's after that. Whatever the fuck is after the yeah. end of the earth, then that's where I'm going, man. So uh, my, my psych up is all about uh, devastation, laying fucking waste. I don't want a single building to be left standing when King Kong comes to town. And baby, King Kong is here. Cause I am the motherfucking one. <laughs> yeah, because you said and the thing was what well, you say. Like you, were, they told you you could die for the contest. You said, "What a great way to go!" Hey, that's the fucking <laughs> best way I can think of to go, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you uh, coming on here, CT. It was it was amazing. Hey, it was my honor, man. You know, to have somebody of your stature ask me to do this, I really appreciate. it. I learned a lot, um, you know, I learned a lot from you also coming up. Just honestly, um, it's funny, the big, you know, you look back on something, the biggest takeaway I had from the whole thing was the importance of arm work because one, I saw Richard Schoenberger about this close of a grip. Yep. Biceps. And then you and your arms, I'm like, cause I always, I didn't have the bodybuilding background initially. I always thought it was kind of like weenie stuff, like, you know, p posing and all that. Yeah, and I saw arms and like totally at like 15 years old, totally like molded my perspective of like a tree. A tree is going to be more stable in a storm with a bigger trunk, and that's the arms on a bench press in, in a nutshell, huh? Absolutely. I mean, I, people uh, <clears throat> don't give enough emphasis, I don't think, to uh, arms in the bench press movement, and I, I mean forearms included. Uh, you know, because the, the, the thicker and bigger the forearm is, and it's running into a big ass bicep. That I mean, it doesn't want to. It doesn't want to fold up completely. It's, you got the forearm running into that big ass bicep. It's almost like a spring action, man. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it, it, it helps. Big what ass. What you do for forearms, if you don't mind me asking? How big are they? No, what you do for them? Like, oh what? man, you know uh, <clears throat> the. The shit that we did back in the day with the forearm roll off the end of the, the yeah. bench press uh -huh. uh, and um, hammer curls, of course, reverse curls. I love reverse curls standing and on the preachers. Uh, I seen, uh, of course, I seen my boy uh, Larry Scott doing reverse curls on a preacher bench, and that became a, a big, you know, thing that I used to do for forearms is. I copied a lot from the old school guys, man. I learned a lot from the old school guys. Did you know Larry Scott at all? Not at all. Not at all. Just looked up to him. Uh, <clears throat> you know, would follow by every article, you know, all of his workout plans, 
I, I get them and and uh, watch it when they had some videos and stuff on the later in the years they had videos of him training. I'd watch all the videos and but I remember him. Uh, they had a a TV program called the Million Dollar Movie when I was a kid, mm -hmm. and he would come out. He was a gladiator. And then he would come out and introduce the fucking movie. And that shit went in black and white. I would run, me and my brother Walt would run to the fucking TV. Uh -huh. Oh shit, it's on, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this was this was that's that's how my first introduction. I didn't know who he was. But I was like, this is a, a big motherfucker, wherever he is. <laughs> right. So that that was it. I really appreciate you for taking me more time. I learned a ton and had a lot of fun doing this. So thanks for coming on, CT. Hey, thank you very much. I, I, thank you again. It was an honor to be thank on you. this show. Thank you. All right. Thanks, buddy. Okay. All right. Bye.